Hello, everybody, and welcome back to uh, a little bit of a different video, kind of in the same style as the core box overview we did uh, probably about a month ago now. Oh, that's longer than I thought. This time around, however, we are talking about the new X Men stuff revealed at Mini Stravaganza. So I am joined by the resident uh, X Men expert himself, Reed. And uh, yeah, Reed, I know you're excited for this stuff. Um, I am very excited. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to yeah. go ahead. We're going to start breaking down some of the stuff that was revealed, some of the stack cards and things like that. And we're just starting now. We'll, we'll be showing off some of the art that they showed. I didn't include all of it in here. I didn't want to go too, too crazy. Uh, these were all just screenshots that I that I managed to snag from various discords as well as a few of my own this time around. I, uh, I was actually able to catch the stream this time. So I, I just grabbed some screenshots of some things. So... I mean, X-Men's building up quite the roster. Is this everyone, Reed? Can you confirm or deny if anyone's missing here? Oh, God. Um, I think... I oh, don't see magic. We're also, like, it's got Wolverine, but it doesn't have uh, Logan Wolverine, which I guess makes sense. They're probably trying not to double up. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned and magic. Missing... Uh, or magic. Jean's here. Uh, Jean's here. Uh, Honey Jean's Badger. Here. Yeah, the, the kidneys are missing. Yeah, okay, okay, so yeah. it's not quite okay. everyone, but still. Um, a lot of the icons. But yeah, anyone watching this isn't here to see the fancy art, they're probably here for the stack cards, so we'll move on to, um, first of all, I think we already knew how these guys were coming up, but uh, I guess the new new formatting on the boxes is cool to see. It's very similar to what they're doing for the four packs, so of course we know we're getting Bishop and Nightcrawler together, Iceman and Shadowcat together, and Professor X and Shadow King. And that keeps throwing me off because I keep expecting it to just be... Um... Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Oh, that's fair. Um, but yeah, so... Leaving I... their options open, I think, for different for sure. names. For sure, yeah. Um, I mean, they kind of referenced uh, Captain Kate during the, during the stream, so maybe we'll eventually see that one down the line. Um, the, the, the piratized version. Um, I yeah. would love Roger's leadership. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think we already knew these were the pairings that they were coming with, but it's very much confirmed now. Um, next up, we have, they spoiled for us the Wakandan uh, rival panel box. So, first of all, let's take a look at King T'Challa here. So, it might be a little hard to read, but I will read everything out. Um, so, first of all, King T'Challa is coming in as a five threat. He's going to be 7 stamina on both sides, long mover, size 2, with 4-4-4 four, four, four for his defenses. Uh, as far as I can tell, nothing changes between his front and his back, so we're just going to read off the front side here, but if you're if you're skeptical, you can, you can pause and read the other side as well. Um, so first of all, he has Vibranium Spear. It's going to be a range 3, 6 dice energy attack for free. After the attack is resolved, he's going to build power equal to the damage dealt. And if the character is within two of him, he can re-roll up to two of his attack dice. If not, after the attack is resolved, if the character is size three or less, he's going to push them towards himself. So it's kind of similar to what Magneto's got going on with his uh, with his builder. Not quite the same thing, but, but quite similar. Uh, then he yep. has the Panther's Fury. It's going to be a four-cost spender, eight dice range two, so a little bit closer combat. It's got a wild throw trigger. After this attack is resolved, if the target character is size 3 or less, he's going to throw them medium. After this attack is resolved, he may advance medium. Um, yeah, that sounds like a solid spender to me. I, I don't think it's anything crazy, but getting movement and a throw and both of those being medium are, are solid on an 8 dice attack. Um, yeah, um, I do wish it was maybe a size 4 throw, but... That's fair. I understand why it's size 3. <laughs> That's fair, yeah. He doesn't really have any way of dealing with size 4 characters as far as I can tell. Um, he's got strength of the ancestors, so he is coming with a leadership. Uh, there was a lot of speculation on on whether or not uh, Black Panther would have the would have a leadership in this box because we knew Killmonger was going to be getting one, uh, but it turns out they're both getting one. And Black Panthers is quite interesting. Once per turn, when an allied character pushes an enemy character, if that character contacts a terrain feature during the push, it takes one damage. So. Already, I think there's going to be tons of tons of models that synergize well. Um, I mean, obviously, Black Panther uh, himself will be synergizing all right with that, with the Vibranium Spear giving the push towards. Um, Shuri is going to synergize really well with that. Shuri's and, going to be cool. And then taking it out of affiliation, I mean, I wish I could run original Black Panther with this, but um, taking it out of affiliation... Um, 
uh, if models like Iron Man will be half decent just for just for consistent pushes. Uh, someone at our locals mentioned Blob, and I think that's going to be really really cool. And then a handful of the Web Warriors. I'm actually really thinking like Gwen in um, in Wakanda now because she's got the push on her uh, on her gainer, uh, the impact webbing, and then also the the pull from Webline. Um, any anything that's jumping out to you, Reed, for that leadership? Um, I think you named most of the ones I can think of off the top of my head, but uh, yeah, no, um, it's a it's a pretty solid leadership. Um, yeah. it is once per turn, uh, which is fair. Um, yeah, yeah, thankfully. Um, it very I much fits the theme of what Conans like to do, though. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. and I mean, we we also mentioned uh, uh, earlier with some of our other locals that um. Cosmic Ghost Rider is going to be able to use this as well, so he's going to pull you, light you on fire, and damage you now. Uh, obviously, it's all dependent on there being terrain features in between you, but yeah. Uh, technically, OG Gene can work with this. <laughs> I, I, or, I not OG Gene, just Gene, I guess. Yeah, we're, we're we're still expecting another one eventually, but yeah. Um, and Cyc yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, true. Actually, yeah. Cyclops, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. more places for, for the underloved X-Men characters. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, so going and continuing with King T'Challa's card here, he has Bound. It's going to be a three cost. Place him within two. The next Vibranium Spear attack it makes this activation adds two dice. It can only be used once per turn. I mean, that's quite solid. Making your builder an eight dice yeah. builder. <laughs> yeah, as uh, well as, you know, pierce. a Gamma Leap. No Pierce. No Pierce, no Pierce, thank God. Uh, Reroll within two. Yeah, uh, so only only rerolling two dice to 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 clarify, but still quite good. Yeah. yeah, I mean we've seen what that means on something like Logan, right? Yeah, this is fantastic. Uh, so next we have Royal Rebuke. So this is a two cost reactive. After an attack targeting this character is resolved, if the attacking character is within three of this character, this character may use the superpower. This character rolls four dice for each crit wild uh, or crit or wild in the result. The attacking character is going to suffer one. So basically, a uh, non-type dependent counter strike, or sorry, non-range. Oh no, it is range dependent. It's just a counter strike. I I, I don't Where think this I... is different at all. I think you're right. I don't think it's different. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So solid. Yeah. And then lastly, we have Defender of Wakanda. When another allied character is dealt damage by an enemy effect, this character gains one power, which I'm pretty sure is just a better version of uh ghost riders power gain um ghost riders i believe specifies attack oh uh, i could wow. be wrong about that i'd have to double check but i believe it specifies attack so i think t'challa king t'challa's just got better better ghost rider power gen which it I mean, is a very good superpower <laughs> it's it's fantastic i mean yeah um having the having bound for for three means you know if two of your allies have been punched or one of your allies has been punched twice uh, you've got you've got turn one bound, which means you have a turn one eight dice builder going, uh, which is which is yeah. Really he's good. got got good damage, good utility too. He's gonna push people yeah. and throw with the spender. Yeah. I think King T'Challa is gonna see a lot of play. I think he's gonna be a great model, for sure. Next we have Killmonger Usurper. So this is gonna be a four three four uh, defense line with six stamina. It looks like on both sides. Uh, coming in at four threat, so he's a little bit, little bit lighter than the the T'Challa we're seeing, but he is another leader. Um, so starting out with his attacks, we've got vibranium weapons. It's going to be a range two five dice uh, builder, I believe. Yeah, builder with a wild pierce. Uh, that's solid. I think I think the original Killmonger has something very very similar. I um, believe it's the exact same. <laughs> yeah, well, there we go. Yeah. Uh, yep. Then we have Covert Armament. So this is range 4, 4 dice gainer, and if the target character is within 2, it cannot modify its defense dice during the attack. That's an interesting one. I think I'll primarily be using it because of the range 4, but against specific models, I think that, that anti-mod thing is really good. I mean, Web Warriors. Um, Again, against stuff like ASM, I guess. I, yeah. I still might prefer doing the Vibranium Weapons. Just Especially with the, the Pierce. Pierce. Yeah, It's hard to give that up, but yeah interesting but um i mean having a range four builder is never bad so or gainer oh no yeah for sure <laughs> uh, next i am not going to try to pronounce that kililiana's fury it's also blurry which doesn't help here um something's fury it's range three six dice 
three cost attack. Add dice to the attack roll equal to the this character's current damage. So kind of like a Wolverine and and um, I mean Hulk, I guess. Kind of. Is there anyone else who does that? I feel like there's someone else who does that. No, because Sabretooth um, was the other one I was thinking, but he actually does it on the again the damage on the target character. Right. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, so so it'll be six dice. But you know, if if Killmonger's hanging around at like one health or something, that's suddenly an eleven dice range three attack, and the target character cannot modify their defense dice during the attack. So yeah, that's that's a solid spender. It's situationally going to be better than other than other times. You know, if you haven't taken any damage, it's fine. If you have, then it's very good. Um, oh yeah. So, Strength of the New Generation. I haven't actually read this myself yet. Oh, yes, I have. I, I, I skimmed this. So, during the power phase, choose up to three allied characters. Give each chosen character an herb token. While a character with an herb token is attacking, it may spend its token to add one die to its attack roll. At the end of the round, when removing activated tokens from characters, remove all herb tokens as well. A character that has an herb token removed in this way suffers one damage and gains one power. So that's an interesting one. It's kind of giving me, um, oh, what's it called? Winging It vibes from Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, it's interesting that it's going to make you take damage to gain that power if you if you don't spend your herb token during your turn. I don't know how yeah. I feel about that. I like the versatility of it because most of the time you will be able to spend it, but it's it's an interesting an interesting downside to it that i don't think it needed i think because I, when i first read it i read it as heals one and gains one power and i think that would have been yeah. totally fine yeah i mean I, th I still think it's good like in the first turn if you're not making attack and you have a character whose critical point is maybe like two powers on a, the next turn and you want them to pick up an objective like yep. it, yeah. it's solid giving the power like that um no, for sure. I, I do like that it's versatile like that. I, I like that you can consciously make that choice um, to kind of be like, okay, yeah, I'll take a damage for this, but I'll gain a power and, that, and that's more valuable here. Um, yep. So yeah, I think I think it's it's going to be solid. It'll open up some plays um, for, you know, so, some early game or turn two things and nothing turn one really. But I mean, extra dice turn one can't hurt either though. So that's solid. Uh, he's got a pounce. I don't think this is anything we haven't seen before. Um, if they're, they're like, I think it's the same as the one on the old Panther and, and a bunch of other models, but basically he spends two, throws himself small. He doesn't take damage if he collides with a character or terrain feature, um, but they of course still do, and it's once per turn. Helps him get up the board. He's only a medium mover, so, so that's not bad. Um... And then Untamed Force. So this is a two-cost reactive. After an attack targeting this character is resolved, it may use the superpower. If the attacker is within range two, he may make a Vibranium's Weapons attack targeting the attacker uh, once per turn. Do most crackbacks have a once per... Yeah, you know what? Now that I think about it, I think they do. Most it's, do. Most it's cool to see. I don't think Wakanda had their own crackback yet. Um, so I think that's yeah. that's solid. Uh, and I mean, that Vibranium Weapons is a five dice builder with Pierce. That's, that can hurt. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And for what it's worth, technically, I think you could spend an herb on it if you wanted to make it a six dice builder with Pierce. So um, You can, yeah. yeah. I still I, think I prefer the original Killmonger. I was um, about to say the same. Like, I think this one's not bad. I think his leadership is interesting and, and potentially very good. We'll have to see it in play. But I think... In a vacuum, I think the other one's probably a little bit more killy and roughly the same defensively. I, I, I'm not super familiar with him, but... I believe he has one less mystic defense, but that's not going to mean a lot in... It's like 60% of matches at least, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I will say, though, at least, like, I think his leadership's pretty good. Um, so I can see him seeing play because of that. But. Yeah, I, I think he's he's at least interesting and we'll definitely we'll definitely see him on the table a few times before we make a final call on him, but yeah, no, I yeah. think I think he seems he seems at the very least decent. Um I, I don't think he'll be bad. I think he'll certainly see the occasional bit of play. Uh unfortunately he doesn't really synergize at all with the other Panthers leadership. Um uh, no no shoves or anything like that going on here, but yeah, it's fine. He did the old one. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Uh, so next up, they revealed one-shot uh, rules, which I guess I should have reordered these a little bit. I should do these first. Um, oh, they revealed yeah. some of the terrain that we already knew was coming, but they revealed how they're releasing it. So it's going to be two boxes. We have the Kingdom of Wakanda terrain pack, which is the, the vehicle, the tree, and then uh, 
totem looking things. I don't actually know what they are. I might have to see them up closer, but uh, and then some maybe some... lamppost. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah. Cotted lampposts. I don't know. Yeah, they could be fancy, fancy lampposts. Um, and then yeah, we got some some panther statues and a little shrine uh, icons of Bast. Um, so yeah, I think uh, both of these look really good. I mean, we've seen the train before. Uh, I think they both look fantastic, but they're coming with rules now. So, Reed, have you have you looked at the one shots at all? Do you know how they do you do you do you know what these are? I a little bit? briefly glimpsed them. I heard so you can change the threat. Um, yeah. Or they have to change the threat uh, if you're including some of these in your um, games, but uh, they are certainly interesting. Yeah. So so we yeah. have vibranium spill. So yeah, basically the idea behind these is if you're choosing to play with them, they're they're meant for more casual plays, my understanding. Um, but if you're choosing to play with them, they'll modify the threat value and add a bunch of special rules to your scenario. So vibranium spill, uh, basically you're going to place the vibranium hauler and all six vibranium canisters. So I'm, those are either tokens that come with the box or, a, or pieces of terrain that aren't shown on the box. I, I, I'm not sure. Um, but six vibranium canisters, and then you're going to have a bunch of special rules. So the vibranium hauler is not destroyed when it is thrown or collided with by, with by characters and terrain features. Instead, after the collision is resolved, you place it within one of the character or terrain feature it collided with. The player that caused the effect resolves this place. So basically, the vibranium hauler can't be destroyed, but you can basic you can still toss it around. Um, okay, sure. Uh, and then. Unstable Vibranium. A character holding at least one Vibranium canister loses one power per Vibranium canister it is holding during the power phase, so you're going to lose power by holding onto these. So they are probably objectives, not or like little tokens, not actually, um, what's it called? Uh, train pieces. Uh, you yeah. can interact with them to pick them up and place them on your stack card, uh, and then you can interact with the hauler to remove your Vibranium canisters and put them onto the hauler, presumably. Uh, and then you'll add one die to your attack rolls this round per canister removed this way. Okay, that's interesting. Um, it's pretty strong. Yeah, interestingly enough, it doesn't actually tell you where to put the vibranium canisters. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, this one does really benefit uh, mobile characters. <laughs> for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, out of activation mobility, so you can get the most out of that. And then... Uh, it's per canister removed, so if you can dump a bunch of them at once, like if you can get two or three of them going, whew, that could be really good. Can be great. Yeah. Yeah. And because you interact with them and stuff, I would assume they're treated as objectives, which means objective stealers will also be able to steal them. So, um, yeah. I mean, I hopefully you're not holding onto them that long, but yeah. <laughs> that's fair. Um, of the down but yeah, no, they, they seem, they seem pretty, pretty solid. Um, and then the other one is the Panther Stood Watch. If not already on the battlefield, place one or two, or one or more small panther statues on the battlefield, not within two of another terrain feature. Uh, and then it gives you two special rules. Eyes of the Gods, while within three and line of sight of a panther statue, when a character suffers damage, it gains an additional power. So basically handing out ornery within three, that's solid. Uh, and then on the prowl, when a character would become dazed or KO'd before it is removed from the battlefield, its controlling player may place one of the panther statues within two of the dazed or KO'd character. This special rule may place a panther statue that has been removed from the battlefield back onto the battlefield. Then the character is dazed or KO'd. That's that's really cool. That sounds that sounds like a fun fun so, fluffy thing. Like these sound like fun, nice, casual, like uh, yeah, alternate um, train. Yeah, no, for but, sure. Yeah, I think yeah. they're 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 definitely something that I would include for casual games. I hope we don't see too many of these creeping their way into tournaments and stuff, but they seem fun for casual. Uh, notably, the Panther Stood Watch, you play one threat down, which means 14 threat is a thing again. No. <laughs> it's coming back. <laughs> uh, I guess you can maybe play like 21 threat or something. In if you theory, get a plus if one. we start seeing pluses, yeah. yeah. Um, and That'd they did cool. say that all terrain packs going forward are going to have these. Um, so there'll, there'll always be optional rules. You'll never be forced to use them, but they'll, they'll exist. Um, and really interestingly is both of these involve placing terrain, which is something that you've never been able to actually do before, unless I'm mistaken, is place down terrain during the game. Because, I mean, terrain is usually not a perfect circle, so placing it can be advantageous towards someone when you do it um so it's it's an interesting uh an interesting kind of mechanics thing of how that works and, and how to properly do that um 
but I'm, I'd imagine it's pretty loose because like they, they like they said during the stream, this is for casual play. So yeah, this was not designed for competitive play in mind. <laughs> so yeah. next up, Reed, I know you're excited about this one. Um, oh yeah. I don't know how well you can read it on the sh- on the screen share, I... but do you want to read this one off? It's probably better if you read it. I can't right, really. Fair enough. Um, yeah. So we have Nightcrawler. This is uh, this is the first card that they revealed during the stream, or I, I guess sorry, first X Men card they revealed during the stream. Uh, they have yeah. the, the Wakanda box first. Uh, so he's coming in four three three six health four threat medium move size two relatively standard looking line there. He's got teleporting strike. So this is a builder attack he's going to gain equal to the damage dealt it's range three and it's got haha after damage is dealt if this character is not within two of the target character the target character gains the stun special condition so that is an automatic stun no triggers no anything oh boy automatic stun on a builder is really good notably if you're not within two so there there is some ways to restrict it but yeah that's crazy good yeah and x-men with you have hops and ways of mitigating that uh, if you really want to true get the stun and um later and, on and himself <laughs> yeah <laughs> and himself <laughs> uh so then he has brimstone blitz here so this is his spender it's going to be range two only five dice usually but we'll we'll talk about that in a second uh and it only costs you one so a very cheap spender add dice to this attack equal to the number of times this character has been placed this turn so i mean with Stormhop, that's an immediate one we're gonna we're gonna see very quickly that it can be a lot more than one uh and then it has crit hit flurry of blows after this attack is resolved this character may make an additional attack action that attack must target the original target character so really important part of this is that it does not specify that that attack cannot trigger flurry of blows meaning <laughs> In theory, if you were getting the trigger every time and you started with 10 power, you could make this attack 10 times in a row into the same target. Now, of I course, absolutely love this attack. <laughs> on on five dice, you're not very likely to get the, the trigger, but we're going to get there. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, next we have Bamf. This is an X cost ability. He can spend one to three power to use the superpower. Uh, he places himself within range X of himself. Uh, where X is, of course, the amount spent. He can only do this once per turn. So, um, just to... Also, just maximum to, of three. Just maximum of three, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, gonna gonna bring us back to Bl- Brimstone Blitz real quick and say with a Storm Hop, we're now at seven <laughs> dice for your first one. Um, it's very easy seven to get Very easy to get that to seven dice. So, um, if, you, if you haven't used your Storm Hop yet and you have two power on Nightcrawler, this is already a seven dice spender. Um, one power which is well well one great. power to bamf i will i will count that one but... power to... oh, okay sure yeah yeah like, so, so, so two power points. two power and you've got seven dice but now we get to the part where it starts to get absurd we have puff of smoke when this character makes an attack after damage is dealt this character may use this superpower which is free uh place this character within two of the target character oh boy <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so that is also not once per turn, meaning every brimstone blitz you make, you will be able to place yourself, which will then add one die to the next one. So that trigger very quickly becomes easier and easier as you're starting out with seven dice, and every time you make the attack, you're getting one more, and it's costing you a whopping one power to do this. Um, yes. <laughs> Oh he's gonna boy. be really good at taking out the bigger models. Um, yeah, this this number of attacks you can potentially throw out in a turn is absolutely insane. Yeah, I am oh, as a Hulk player, I'm terrified. Um, also, placing it off within two is a large distance. Like if you ever played with Angela, like that is oh yeah, two two is a very far. solid place. Um, so yeah, you'll also have some versatility from it too. Um, Next we have, uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce that either, a word that starts with you, acrobatics. Um, oh God, I'm trying to read that, but I can't. Yeah, um, it's unglublic. I don't know. Um, I'm going to say it right. <laughs> ultimate acrobatics, there we go. Um, it's going to cost you two power, it's reactive. When you are targeted by a physical or energy attack, or make a dodge roll, 
Uh, you can use the superpower, add two dice to your defense or dodge roll. Solid, that, that's, that's a pretty standard defensive tech thing. It's basically better vibranium shield. Ouch, the saying that out loud hurts. Um, <laughs> I but will yeah. say, I think he kind of needs it, because otherwise he's a bit squishy. But, For sure. 4-3-3 um, uh, three, three on 6 health is, is not crazy. And I've also noticed um, that the one change it looks like he has to his flip side is he goes down to 5 health. So yeah. he's he's not the tankiest lad in the world, but that is that is going to be big for him. Uh, next, he has invisible in shadow. So this is really cool. I think this is super fluffy, well well written rule. Um, while he's within one of a terrain feature of size two or more, uh, basically he has stealth. So he the characters need to be within three to target him. Um, I think that's a super fluffy way of doing stealth, and I think it's really cool. Um, it's a really cool way of doing himself. Yeah, I yeah. like that. And he has all the mobility yeah. in the world to get himself. Uh, within pieces of terrain between Banff and placing off of all of his attacks. So I don't think it's... Yeah, I don't think that'd be much of a problem. (laughs) Is it worse stealth? Yes. Is it much worse? No. Um, I will say, um, Mark for Death doesn't get rid of this, because it's not actually stealth. That's true. That's a very important distinction, actually. All right. Yep. Um, It's like... And last but not least, they gave him Wallcrawler, which, yeah, fair. That, That checks out. I'd be kind of surprised if he didn't. So... I don't want to spend too much time because I could talk about this model uh, for for a very long amount of time. Oh, same. I absolutely adore him. <laughs> but um, <laughs> this model is going to be really powerful. I think he has absurd mobility. His ability to kind of pick a model and, you know, assuming he gets the first couple triggers, which are the hardest ones, where I think you, you said it was like high 50s, mid 60s, uh per, percent for the first couple triggers um, if you are if, so if you're doing the seven dice one it's like with seven it's four percent 56 percent then it goes up to like 60 something and then 70 after that yeah so it's, it's gonna scale up like pretty quick as you as you throw more dice into that attack and let's not forget here too that before you get into the 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 blitz you could do a builder and place off of that so you could actually be starting the blitz with an eight dicer um, oh, that's another thing I want to point out too. Um, his triggers are worded pretty nicely on his builder and uh, yes, what's it called? Pot of smoke. Uh, uh, pop no. of smoke. Pop of smoke. Pop of smoke. I'm like that. Pot of smoke doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's gonna stun before it, he places within two. Yeah, because they're both after the damage is dealt, so you can choose the order of it. Um, which is probably always giving the stun first, but yeah. yeah. No, Pretty for good. sure. It's um yeah, I think this model is going to be insanely good um for X-Men and also just in general. I mean, you and I talked about this a little bit, but under uh Red Skull 1, Cabal's Red Skull 1, um you'll be gaining a power after each of these attacks assuming it deals damage, which when you're scaling dice like that it probably is. The only problem with that is getting that first like the first couple going will be harder cuz you can't guarantee you're starting off at 7 like you can with X-Men um yeah. but like if that starts getting rolling it's now refunding itself as well which is just absurd um is there anywhere else that this is really striking out to you other than other than the obvious x-men and, and red skull um it's not bad in midnight suns for some yep. reasons of yep. the place. Um, I, place i think you know what i i feel like someone mentioned that earlier today too at our locals and yeah 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 um, uh, yeah anywhere you can give them re-rolls without him spending power i don't know much that can do it like wakanda yeah. has shuri well actually that was the other thing we talked about too is if you're running him like under red skull we were talking about running him with like shuri and stuff as well if you can squeeze them in there to give him the the offensive rerolls uh new iron man for that matter um yep yeah yep. no that's i think pretty good. that's a, that's going to be a big one actually is being able to give this model some rerolls for for making sure you get that trigger a little bit more uh especially oh yeah you can rerolls. run him in like shield with stark armory <laughs> yeah 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 didn't think about that um so yeah there's well and also just the new iron man has a uh re-roll aura right uh he can pay up to three to re-roll your attack dice for you so, oh yeah he does have that so yeah um and for that matter uh he doesn't love spending the extra power for it but new steve um new steve will help a little yeah. bit yeah um, get you at least your first trigger yeah it'll help you get the first couple triggers of course this is all dependent on him having a decent amount of power at the beginning and Thankfully, he doesn't have any absurd way of building power. Like, his builder is just a five-dicer, uh, and he doesn't have yeah. any way of buffing it. So, so thankfully, he shouldn't be getting to have those, like, perfect world scenarios where he's making, you know, 10-plus attacks in a turn, but... Uh, I will say, in X-Men, though, even if you don't get the flurries or anything, 
still making a seven and then an eight dice attack is pretty good. Oh, um, for sure. Um, like that's just pretty solid for a four threat. Yeah, if you don't get a single flurry, this is still, um, yeah, like you say, a seven followed by an eight um, for a total of three power and a storm hop. And you're play and you're still placing. You're getting like mobility off this too. Like, yeah, it's not much to complain about. No, like, like it's it's solid even if the triggers don't go off. So yeah, no, this is a fantastic model. Um, extremely powerful. Super excited to put him on the table. Yeah. Yeah. So going up next, talking about powerful things, we have his tactics card. So this is a mass transit and new templating thing that's important to note is they now have active actions. This is going to take an action even though it doesn't say anywhere on the card. It's unaffiliated, which is worth noting. He can bring this outside of X-Men. Um, he can spend three to play this card, choose up to three other allied characters within two of Nightcrawler. You're going to place Nightcrawler within three of himself, and then you're going to place all the chosen characters within one of Nightcrawler. After this effect is resolved, he's going to gain the stagger condition. So I think this is going to be a really solid card for giving you some mass mobility. Um, if you, you know, a bunch of your team gets displaced on the same turn, this will be a good way of bringing people back in. It'll be really good for, I think, scenarios like Researcher or Gamma, where typically, historically, X-Men have kind of had a bit more of a struggle staying relevant on those, but against, at least against lists like mine, like control lists and stuff like that, it'll be solid there. Uh, maybe less so yeah, with lists, but... Won't be so good against, like, Malekith, um, but... Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely has play against control lists. Yeah, so I think I think it's quite a powerful card. Um, notably, Nightcrawler's going to be gaining the stagger after this, but if his... If he's already done an action this turn, uh, then he doesn't actually have to shake the stagger until the next round, um, because the, and if the they stagger. Don't... Hmm? Go ahead. Sorry, and if they don't daze him, um, he can uh, play Children of the Atom to remove the stagger, which is nice. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. Um, so it's not that bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think this is a sold card. I think it'll it'll probably be included in many lists that have nightcrawler but it's whether or not you're actually bringing it in the game is just going to be dependent on the scenario and what kind of list you're seeing on the other side of the table so yeah i think it's kind of situational but yeah it's a good utility card it's uh, still good for him to have next up we have shadow cat uh so we have a uh, three threat which god dang we haven't had one of those in a while <laughs> um this is going to be a three 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 five health Three threat with size two and a long mover. So X Men's finally getting an affiliated long mover, which is at long last terrifying. <laughs> that is so scary. Um, so let's let's go into everything that she does, and she has a wall of text here. And I don't think anything changes between the two sides. So we'll just talk about the the healthy side here. But she has phasing strike. This is going to be a range two four dice. Uh, after this attack is resolved. She's going to gain power equal to damage dealt, so it's a four dice builder. Uh, during this attack, the defending character did not add crit results to its total successes, and they cannot add additional dice as a result of crits. That's really good. I think you did the math on this and, and determined that that basically makes it almost as good as a five dice builder typically would yeah, be. Yeah, slightly worse, but um, we're not talking that far like zero point one percent worse yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, it, it makes up for it with that effect. Or not 0 yeah. 0.1. It would have been, what, 10% worse was what it was? Or no, it was 0 0.1. 0 0.1 results worse. Like 0, 0. 0.1 yeah, less like damage average, on average. Yeah, it, wasn't, it yeah, wasn't a percentage like thing. Damage. It wasn't a percentage thing. Um, gotcha. But yeah. Uh, and then it's got a wild sidestep. After this attack is resolved, place this character within range 1 of itself. So that's that's solid. That's a, that's a nice little solid thing. Solid wild effect. Yep. Uh, I can help you close some gaps, although it's actually kind of your close range attack. So can I guess can help you get out of range. Um, uh, yeah. and then it has get him Lockheed. This is an energy attack. Also, uh, zero cost range three, four dice, uh, builder or sorry, gainer. Uh, and it's got a wild incinerate. So you'll be able to throw out some incinerates with this, which is pretty solid. Um, another only four dice, but it's a gainer this time. So you don't care too much if you get damage. Um, I do like that. The gave her a gainer. Yeah, no, the gainer is nice. You'll have a little bit more consistency when you need it. Um, yep. And then her spender is Intangible Assault. This is going to be a range 3, 7 dice, 3 power spender. During this attack, the defending character does not add crits and does not explode them. Uh, so same as her builder. In that case, it's just going to hurt their, their defensive odds a fair bit. 
Uh, and then Wild Ghosted. After this attack is resolved, she's going to place herself within two of herself. So it's literally just a better version of her builder, I think. Um, not yeah. too much to say yeah. about it. Three cost seven dice spenders are generally solid. Having a place and, and not counting their, their crits is, is solid effect. I think it's going to help a lot, especially if you're going into... Um, if you're going into any of the models that can kind of manipulate crits, um, you know, your reality stones, your malachites, your, your dominoes, that's going to be pretty rude against them. Against them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be, it's going to be solved in a few places. Um, yeah, I think that's a solid spender. Nothing really too much to say about it. Uh, phase rush is a two cost active superpower. Place this character within two of its current position once per turn. So a little gamma leap for two, not bad. Um can't touch this when this character or an allied character within two is targeted by a melee or melee physical or energy attack i've been playing too much shadow point uh <laughs> it, or, or would make a dodge roll this character may use the superpower this character adds two dice to the defense or dodge roll if this character or the allied character um wait a minute this character adds two dice to the defense or dodge roll yeah so it does affect theirs i remember we had this confusing confusion yeah, on the wording think- earlier the wording but yeah if this character or the allied character is pushed or thrown by the special rules of the attack after the effect is resolved you may place with a pushed or thrown character within one of itself so you can kind of negate a little bit of a shove or throw not necessarily the entire thing but that still can be quite huge uh especially if they don't get the full distance or if they needed the full distance to get you out of range of whatever so yeah like if your back's up on an objective and they can slightly push you off of it um this can be the game changer for that um, for sure yeah, also and, solid defensive ability. Yeah, I mean, um, adding two dice is, is always good. I think that's that's sold. Uh, two cost, yeah. Uh, and then yeah. last, she, she has stealth. Helps keep her alive a little bit. That is, um, I mean, she can use her defensive thing on herself. So I guess she, she has two pieces of defensive tech. But yeah, I think, I think she's quite good. I think the defensive ability is really, really nice. It's it's nothing... I, I, I think she's... Uh, she's a lot less scary than uh, Nightcrawler is, but I still yeah. think she's a very good model, uh, long mover with a you know with with a gamma leap and and solid defensive ability that in the right situation can be really really powerful. Um, yeah, I'm very happy that they gave us a um, long three threat long mover, and she's got some pretty solid utility on her too. Yeah, I think she's quite a solid character. Um, honestly, I might even try her out at some point in Web Warriors or something like that. I think she she might have some play there. Uh, I think. Being able to, yep. I I'm realizing that it's only within two that she can use her defensive um thing makes me think that a little less like because they they typically want to spread out a little more than that. But they really like D shapes. But yeah. um, I think it might be funny in convocation because if you take a yeah. damage and you get thrown, you get to place within one twice. And <laughs> uh, so that would only be for physical or energy attacks though. So half the time it won't matter. Oh yeah. <laughs> shoot! Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> but. No, that would have been really cool otherwise. Yeah. 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 No, I think I think she's a cool model. She'll certainly see play. Uh, if if nowhere else, then definitely in X Men. But I think she she's got enough going for her that she might have reasons to be seen other places. Um, not much to say though. She's pretty straightforward. She doesn't actually have anything too too crazy other than that can't touch this ability. So, uh, moving on. Solid character. From Shadow Cat, we have they revealed some more card art for a few things, but Xavier's Dream is the one they actually gave us the text for here. Uncanny X Men, so it is an X Men affiliated card, but notably not an Xavier card, because unfortunately, spoiler alert, they didn't reveal Xavier today. Uh, when an allied character would suffer damage, any number of other allied characters may each spend one power to play this card. For each power spent to play this card, reduce the amount of damage the allied character would suffer by one. Oh my god. <laughs> this card is absolutely insane. <laughs> this card is going to be so powerful. I don't think there's ever a reason you don't bring this card. I think no, if you're I think playing it... X-Men, this is every single time in the list. Or in the Yeah, in pretty the much five. the two cards you'll always see is gonna be that first class and Xavier's Dream. Yeah. Um no. and like you're probably gonna see it more in the first class because there's times where you might not even bring first class on like a researcher like weirdly enough this card is fantastic yeah yeah this card is absolutely insane um i mean yeah i don't have much more to say about like this is arguably better than stuff like exceptional healing or odin's blessing because you suddenly have choice in how much you want to reduce like if you're okay with taking a couple damage 
you might not have to put as much power in. I, I could see this being used a lot of the times to keep characters alive at one, you know, if you know they don't have any way of finishing them off afterwards. I think also, the other upside sucks. of this card, too, is, yeah, you don't have to use it on an affiliated character or anything. It's just, if you're an X-Men, you can play this card, you can play it on any character, any number of characters can spend power on this. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's the other thing. Is that it's not X Men models that have to play for it. So even your splashes, which at this point you don't have many more that you actually care to splash, but even <laughs> your splashes are going to be uh, able to use and pay into this card. It's this card is really strong. This is probably one of the strongest cards in the game right now. I'd put it right up there with things like Galaxy's Greatest. Um, yeah, I would. Yeah, no, this this card's insanely good. Um, we'll we'll have to see i'm i'm already seeing little bits of talk about possibly it being restricted at uh at drop and things like that so oh please i hope not <laughs> we'll we'll see but uh yeah it's it's something um so uh yeah moving on from that they also showed <laughs> off shadow king now i haven't actually taken a look at shadow king yet so that's gonna be my first time properly going through him i've heard bits of what he does but uh so he's gonna be a five threat uh, and he's going to be coming in three, four, five defensive lines. So definitely mystic heavy. He's a slow mover and his model looks like Kingpin. So I'm immediately getting kind of flashbacks to every time I've tried to play Kingpin. Uh, he's going to be having six health on both sides of his card. It looks like, and he is size three. He's coming in with two attacks. His first one is mental shackle. It's going to be a three range, six dice builder. So solid already. Uh, it's got a wild root, which is really good. That's probably one of the best conditions in the game. And after this attack is resolved, if it dealt damage, he gets to advance them short. Okay, that is a very good, very good. It's builder. very good builder. That's yeah, that's crazy good. Okay. Uh, then we have astral disintegration. This is range two, so a little bit more of a more of a melee thing. But you could totally build her and then advance them into your, into it. Uh, it's only five dice at base. I have a feeling that's changing. Uh, and it's got four uh, four cost. Add dice to the attack roll equal to the amount of power the target character has to a maximum of five. Oh, so it's kind of like Penance Stare. Cool. Yeah. And then the target character cannot, modify, or cannot re-roll or modify dice in the defense roll during this attack. Correct me if I'm wrong, but re-rolling dice is modifying dice, no? Yeah, I don't know why they specified that's, it twice. That's interesting. But... It actually kind of makes me think, I wonder if maybe they're rewording some of the rules on that. But Maybe they're just clarifying a little bit. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's a solid spender, up to a 10 dice spender, and they can't modify it. That's, that's quite solid. It's all Mystic, which is obviously one of the better attack types in the game, but not having the versatility means against certain models. It's the worst attack type in the game, so uh give and take but i think overall very solid i mean that builder alone is fantastic that I'm... builder is ridiculous <laughs> wild root uh plus an advance plus it being a six dice mystic builder yeah that's that's insane i love the on damage advance like yeah. it's like mysterios but on a five threat um which For means sure. it's a lot more consistent yeah no i think it's i think it's really good um yeah so already i'm i'm thinking this guy's pretty solid uh, next, we have three cost Astral Fiend. So this is an action, uh, but it's a it's an active superpower that's going to take one of your actions. You're going to place a projection token within three of this character. When measuring range for this character's attacks or superpowers, measure from the projection token. When measuring range for enemy mystic attacks, enemy characters may measure to this character or its projection token. When this character is dealt damage by an enemy mystic attack, remove the token. At the beginning of the cleanup phase, it removed this token. The superpower can only be used once per turn. So basically, um, it's it's a bit of a mini astral ring uh, specifically for him. It's going to help him be able to kind of stay out of the out of the melee um, and still get off his his attacks. Uh, it taking an action means I feel like personally I'd be very hesitant to use this a lot of the time. I'm sure there's situations where it's super valuable, and because he is only a slow mover, it will help you get things get get attacks in. But I feel like a lot of the times I would kind of rather him get towards the meat of the fight and be able to double tap because you know he, he is a five threat, and I would like him to be able to attack a little bit more often. Yeah, like it's more of I think if you just can't get in because um, range three is also longer than like a medium move. Um, yep. 
So it, it's useful, but I just don't think you'll be wanting to use this too often. Yeah, no, we'll see. We'll see how it actually plays out. But yeah, I think I think it's a solid uh, utility piece, at least. Uh, yep. Next, he has Immortal Essence. This is a three cost. He removes up to three damage from himself once per turn. Solid. Um, yeah, that, that's good. Solid. Doesn't have a ton of health for it, but still pretty good. Yeah, he's only a six health pool, but... Um, next, he's got Nightmare Vision. So this is going to cost you four. It's reactive. When a character ends in advance within three of this character... He may use this superpower, roll three dice. The enemy character suffers one damage for each crit while in the result. If the superpower deals at least one damage, this character may advance the enemy character small. This superpower can only be used once per, per turn. So that'll be solid in trap house lists. I think it's, um, I mean, having the advance on it, like you pointed out earlier, this character kind of feels like what if Mysterio was a five threat and... Yeah, that's... it seems it seems like it's good. Um, like controlling an opponent's where they can like, uh, he kind of can sit somewhere if they advance within three. Fits Ooh. them away small. I am just realizing though, it's only three dice. Oh, it's only three and dice. It's still crits and wilds, and it's costing you four power. Uh, I wish that was at least four dice, but yeah, that feels unusually that's... low. The effect is really good because it can deny actions basically. Um. Yeah. But. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, and then lastly, a mega level multiversal entity. He gains one additional power during the power phase. Um, yeah. Overall, I think he's got some really solid things going for him. He's got a few things that feel weirdly underpowered, like the Astral Fiend or the, or the Nightmare Visions. But his builder is absolutely absurd. Uh, his spender is quite solid. He's not the most defensive model in the world but because he has stuff like astral fiend to kind of stay back a little bit um he's not terrible in that regard overall yeah i think he's uh he, he's solid he'll he'll certainly see play i think in in some affiliations none of them are really jumping out to me but i i think he's he's going to be at least half decent um we don't know what affiliations he is yet uh, either but, I could see him working combo a little. Um, yeah, I could that. see him being quite good in combo for the the five dice mystic. But other than that, he's not like yeah doesn't synergize too much beyond the mystic attacks. But yeah, yeah. his builder's really good. <laughs> yeah, no, his his builder's insane. I think that's that's probably the the thing of note on him is that his builder's that's insane. That's probably why you bring him. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, root on a six dice builder is crazy good. Um, but yeah, cool. Oh yeah. Uh, moving on, we have another tactics card they showed off. They showed off Cerebro. So this is an X-Men tactics card. During its activation, an uncanny X-Men character with at least one Mystic Attack and at least five Mystic Defense can play this card. So that is just Emma Frost and Jean Grey right now, uh, and presumably Xavier when he releases. I would be shocked if Xavier can play <laughs> his own Cerebro, but yes. <laughs> For the rest of this round, the character that played this card increases the range of its Mystic Attacks by one to a maximum of five, adds one die to its mystic attacks, and adds one die to its mystic defense rolls. Additionally, this character's attacks do not require line of sight and ignore the stealth superpower for the rest of this round. Um, I think on Emma, this is quite solid. I think, unfortunately, it's not enough to make Jane quite solid. Um, the fact that it's free is, is really nice. Ignoring stealth and, and not requiring line of sight is really nice. Um, yeah, do you have any, any particular thoughts on this? Yeah, actually, one of the um, things I was thinking of, I um, don't know how competitive this play is, but it's going to be fun um, and very strong if you could get it off. But turn one, you can play this on Emma, and then um, using maybe a mix of To Me, My X-Men, and the Storm Hop, um, good chance you can probably double someone, tap someone that's sitting on a back objective or maybe the midline, because um, then you'll have range five attacks. And if you build enough power, you can then uh, head Mistress up your almost your entire team, um, depending right. on how much power you it's it's fun. I I like. It's not consistent. Um, yeah, but, but I, you can do some cool stuff. I think that sounds actually really cool. Yeah, that's a that's a yeah. nice combo. Yep. All right. Nice little fun thing to do. Yeah. No, that sounds sweet. All right. Also increases uh, your odds of getting bent. So maybe you can advance them off the point too. Yeah. No, yep. that's that's quite good. Cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, I look forward. Actually, no, I don't. I'm terrified to see that. <laughs> I'm um, looking forward to it. <laughs> Next up, we have Mojo Ball. So this is a new game mode, which, interestingly, it looks like it's being released as an organized play kit, but they referred to it as a game mode. So I don't know 
if they kind of mean that in the same way that all of the ultimate encounters and, or, or and other organized play things are game modes or if it's actually going to be like a, a properly supported game mode um but they basically described it as insert various sports balls specifically i believe they mentioned rugby and football um combined with mcp uh to me from what they were saying it sounds kind of like it's going to be an almost capture the flag like scenario where probably the victory points to win will not be 16 um and it'll it'll instead be you know either number of rounds or or just a much lower cap um they mentioned that there will be special tactics cards for it but none of the regular ones will be legal otherwise i don't think we know much about this sounds cool i'm down for alternate game modes um but yeah i'm hoping it's something like separation anxiety like another mode like similar to that would be cool something with a lot of replayability would be nice yeah um, yeah that's what i'm kind of yeah we'll we'll see we'll see when they announce more about it but um yeah no it sounds cool i'm, I'm down for stuff like that next up they showed off gwenham and ben riley uh because we didn't get any card spoilers or anything for these i figured i'd throw in their image um i'm still super excited about these uh gwenham in particular i'm really really excited for they said rules wise they tried to make her a combination of Gwen and Venom, which just sounds like the most broken model in the face of the earth to me. Um, I'm I'm just picturing pretty much Gwen, but Venom's defensive line, which admittedly isn't that much better because of the two <laughs> two energy, but Venom's defensive line and his crackback and his terrain throw and his attacks. So like literally just the best things from both of them. Um Actually and very strong then in the body of like let's be real probably a four threat <laughs> um, it's probably gonna be four threat. uh so i mean yeah i'm just basically seeing this as long moving venom maybe with a lifesaver of some form or maybe like crack back when you target allies instead of itself That'd be cool too. That could be that could uh, be neat. I'm this is way speculative. They they barely said anything about it, but I'm excited for this model. I will be getting this day one. These models look absolutely fantastic. As oh, well. they also yeah, they look beautiful. Yeah. Um, Their sculpts, the guitar on Gwen looks fantastic. <laughs> well, apparently, just... like I haven't actually read the the comic line, but apparently the guitar is like uh, the the Carnage symbiote uh, infected Mary Jane and like that's like she turned her guitar into an axe and that's what that's supposed to be oh that's awesome yeah so yeah. um i gotta go find that comic now but um <laughs> yeah so no there's not much to talk about there it's just an image speaking of just an image the um i was about to say sinister six but no it's definitely not the sinister six uh i mean they're all sinister six members um but there's only i mean the now. new doc Ock leadership's sinister six it so. is it is <laughs> And this is for yeah. people you could run with him that you will probably be encouraged to run with him. I think these models look fantastic. Sandman looks amazing. The the detail on him looks fantastic. Um, Shocker gives me Black Bolt vibes, just the the way the like piece on on the ground there is, which I don't think is a bad thing. I think it's cool. Oh no, yeah, it's, it's a good model. Electro and Vulture. Uh, Vulture is in a relatively plain pose, but I I think it looks good. It suits Vulture. Everything here just works. I think these are all nice looking models. Um, I'm only concerned about the connection point on Vulture. That's my only concern. Oh, that, that might that be little one. Once, yeah. Once we get the actual model, it might not be a problem. But X23 has uh, <laughs> made me concerned about stuff like that. Um, no, that's fair. Yeah, that's that that could be a problem. We'll we'll have to see. But Sam Man looks astounding. Um, we also especially got... the big hand off in the corner. <laughs> oh yeah, over yeah. Yeah, like no, that's awesome. Out. Um, we also got a couple reveals we weren't expecting, a couple new models. Uh, so they announced Shang-Chi and Silver Sable. So I think Shang-Chi we were kind of reasonably expecting eventually because, I mean, he's got a movie, so he's becoming, you know, more of an A-lister. Um, Silver Sable was right out of left field. I mean, I'd, I'd heard of her before because she was, she was in the, the Spider-Man, uh, PS4 game, but uh oh i've never heard of her <laughs> she's a bit of a deep cut um and i'm i'm yeah. down with that she's she's a cool character i liked her there um they also specifically said shang chi is going to do something that nobody would be able to predict so i'm going to challenge anyone watching this video still at this point to leave a comment and let me know what they think shang chi is going to do because i want to see if we can prove angie wrong personally 
I don't have any crazy guesses. I feel like they're going to introduce some like wacky new mechanic or something for them. But I think it would be kind of sick if we started seeing uh, something towards like a Heroes for Hire affiliation or something like that. Uh, right now, it wouldn't, I don't think he would make quite enough models for it. But um, I think that would be that would be cool to see. And that's that's my hope for him more so than prediction is that he would come with like a leadership or a card for that. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, they'll rattle the Heroes for Hire card so he can use it too. Um, that is yeah. The we leadership. need the card getting better. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. That that's what the leadership is. Is every single member uh, can use that card every turn. Um, this sounds balanced. Please, God, no. <laughs> this sounds very balanced to me. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah, there, there's no stats or anything. But the models look good. I think they're they're both pretty pretty sweet. Um, yeah, I don't have much to say on these guys. Next up. They teased some new Asgardians. We have a six threat Thor. They that's all they were willing to say about him stats wise is that he's six threat. Uh, presumably he's also going to be a leader, but we don't know that for sure. Uh, we've got Lady Sif, Mighty Thor, which is of course Jane, and a new Loki. And they also said new Loki is basically going to take the annoyingness of the old one up to eleven. Uh, their exact phrase was, if the old one caused mischief, this one is going to cause mayhem. They actively wanted it to be a model that you hate fighting against. So that's... It suits Loki. <laughs> it suits Loki. It's a little worrying because I already hate fighting against the original one. But um, yeah, they also called themselves out. Uh, they mentioned that they've gotten a lot better at doing these lightning effects and... Uh, they, these models won't have the wobbly storm problem where, where that model's like a bobblehead. Um, oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to hear it because these models look amazing. I love the mighty Thor and the Thor. Um, I, I love all of these models. They all look fantastic. I mean, the Loki is appropriately wacky. Sif looks great. All of these look fantastic. I'm, I'm excited for new Asgardians. Yep. I'm, I'm mainly excited for the new Loki. Uh, yeah. <laughs> seems, seems like it might be fun new loki seems really cool and yeah just asgard in general could use a little bit of love right about now so i'm i'm very happy with this yep. and what do i even have last here oh right at the very end they <laughs> dropped this image on us um uh, which you know as everyone is probably rightly assuming this is dracula um yeah uh I, there's not much much more that needs to be said here we're where we are now semi-confirmed that we are getting a dracula which means moon knight better get a tactics card this god dang nerd he owes him his money uh <laughs> but yeah there's not much much more to say about uh mr mr dracula here we don't have stats or anything like that but it's cool to know that he is coming so that is all of the announcements and we are just under an hour here so i'm not going to waste too much time wrapping up but read any any closing thoughts on any of this anything you're you're looking forward to um just um, in general i mean xavier's leadership and uh yeah <laughs> i'm still waiting um, for them to the them to pull a haha funny xavier's not actually an x-men he is uh, leadership for for another affiliation um, that would make no sense and i'd be upset um <laughs> uh but yeah no and that and uh bobby um like iceman is gonna be oh yeah that would be cool it should be pretty cool i've already got a proxy painted up for for iceman for as soon as they drop the stats um we we might try and get a a kate or um nightcrawler proxy painted up as well i know you already have a nightcrawler one but realistically if we want to paint it it's going to be my job um yep. <laughs> so i might i might try and get one of those coming up uh, for the next couple weeks i mean we have a few months until any of these models are actually released so like if i get any battle report out with these guys it'll still be early but i'd like to do it as soon as possible so um hopefully that's something you guys can expect in the next couple months if, if you watch any of the battle reports on the channel but um yeah of course reed you'll be piloting those when when they do release because you know x-men a lot better than i do uh oh i'm not complaining <laughs> <laughs> so yeah but that is going to do it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed if you did be sure to drop a like down below subscribe if you guys are new to the channel you're not going to want to miss the battle reports when we get the the iceman kitty pride and nightcrawler on the table and i will guarantee that we will get all three of them before the new year 
uh, that that is something I will I will make sure happens because none of these guys are releasing until 2024 according to AMG. So we'll we'll have we'll have some early battle reports out so you guys can see what these guys play like on the table, and um, yeah, that's that's something to look forward to. So that yeah, that's that's all I gotta say. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you Reed for joining me in breaking down all of these characters, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.